The question I'm asking myself lately is, can we have a minimal set of premises that would be the base for most of our ethical systems we want to have? This base set would include very simple, intuitive statements, axioms. When you add some new premises, you should be able to construct a specific, reasonable and desirable ethical system. What's more, this base should be such that it would not allow for ethics that we wouldn't agree with, say a type of a psychopathic ethics. Now I'm not saying I'll give you a final base set here and now, but I will try to start a conversation on the topic. I will give my proposal and I invite you to come up with one yourself, critique my approach, comment with your ideas. Earlier I said that this base set of premises should allow us to build ethical theories we would like to have. What are those? Or what questions should ethical theories answer? There are many such questions, of course, but I would like to list a few of them as good examples. Why should I care about others? What is good and what is bad? Which actions are permissible and which aren't? Who can? and who cannot be morally responsible for his, her actions. How do various values compare to each other and what are the relations between them? These are some of the questions I would like to be, if not answered, then at least addressed by a theory of ethics. Base premises could in fact answer some of them or lead to specific conclusions, while at the same time excluding unwanted or anomalous ideas. My proposal for such a set of premises is comprised of four statements. 1. Experiences, such as pain and pleasure, are real. 2. Experiences are moral values. 3. Values of all things are reducible to experiences. 4. Suffering is to be avoided. Yes, it is very simple and has to be extended to get a complete system. This base may not be useful for deriving religious ethics, but my aim is to focus on ethical system talked about in philosophy most often. I tried to choose the simplest premises and the ones that are easiest to explain. I try to explain them now. 1. Experiences such as pain and pleasure are real. Experiences are always happening to subjects, to conscious beings. They are subjective by nature, but it is an objective fact that they do happen. Experiences are a part of the world. That's what I mean when I say they are real. 2. Experiences are values. The most straightforward one. Experiences are what is meant by moral values. A negative experience has a negative moral value. A positive experience has a positive moral value. An experience which cannot be classified as neither positive or negative is neutral. 3. Values of all things are reducible to experiences. When a subject puts value, positive or negative, to something, it means that this being derives experiences or perceives the thing as leading to experiences of some kind. And because experiences are the values, then the starting thing's valuation is eventually explained by experiences of the subject. 4. Suffering is to be avoided. The most contentious one. The number one thing on the list of every ethical system must be something like do not harm the innocent ones. If you don't have anything like that, you don't have an ethics. One of the primary roles of ethics is explaining and arguing for prevention of suffering or unnecessary suffering. I said that this is the most contentious point on my list as it is very vague, abstract and it raises many questions. Should we avoid hurting the ones that want to hurt us? Should we avoid hurting people who already did hurt somebody? And to what extent? What about the situation where we cannot avoid 
someone getting hurt, and many more. The intrinsic problem of ethics is the problem of suffering. That's why it must be pointed out in the fundamental premises. The problems regarding pleasure are secondary. They can be easily added and developed in systems extending the base set. How would extending the base actions look like? How to answer some of the previously asked questions by adding more arguments to the actions? I'll try to show some examples. To the set of four axioms, I'll add one more. The concept of self is deceptive. What I mean by that is that we understand ourselves as comprised of a core me that has thoughts, wants, feelings, that acts, etc. The important things are the things that are important to this me, my feelings, my ideas. The critique of self has long and wide traditions in Hinduism, Buddhism, but also in Western traditions in the works of David Hume and Derek Parfit. We can attack the concept of self by observing that all there is in the mind is a constantly changing kaleidoscope of experiences. Thoughts arise and dissolve, seemingly by themselves. Me is just one type of such recurring thoughts. The agent who would orchestrate this machinery of the mind is nowhere to be found. After developing this argument further and accepting it, we may draw some interesting conclusions. Even though self is an illusion of sorts, thoughts and feelings are real all the same and that they are real no matter when or where they happen. When you remove the fake selves from the picture, you see individuals who experience joy and suffering just as you. It doesn't matter who feels pain as who becomes just an obstacle. What's important is the pain itself. That's why you will care about the welfare of others, as there is no substantive difference between you and them. For the second example, let's think about the pleasure. You may want to construct a sane ethics which will promote maximization of pleasure. So let's add one more premise. Positive states are to be maximized. Now, this creates an interesting situation as we are already operating in the context of avoidance of suffering through the axiom number four. The only viable consequences or prescriptions in this system are those that promote positive mental states but never at the cost of unjustified harm. At the very least, a fleshed out system with all these axioms properly elaborated on and explained could secure something like that. Of course, one of the most, if not the most, important problems in ethics is how to handle responsibility. We have to define responsibility and be able to differentiate agents that are responsible for their actions from agents that aren't. A moral agent can be held accountable for his actions, but an amoral agent is not responsible for his actions in the ethical sense. So an amoral agent can bring about suffering, yet we wouldn't say that this act was bad or immoral. A proper axiom or a set of axioms has to be added to properly handle such cases. In effect, what we have is one simple way of constructing ethical systems. It is an iterative process. We can start simple and complicated step by step, making it more elaborate and valuable. Let me know what you think. Have you seen this being used in the wild? Do you think it's worth giving a try?